Hi there, I'm Daniel from By The Brush Miniatures and today I'll be helping you with building your first model. So for building your first model, the basic tools that you'll need are assuming that you're using, that you're making a plastic model, you'll need some plastic glue or you can use super glue, plastic glue is just easier to work with so long as it is a plastic model and not resin or metal and then some clippers just to get those pieces off the sprue but for tools, that's it. Now you'll also, uh, in the kit, have sprues of the pieces, which should look something like this. You'll have a few of these, and as you can see, for this example, I'm going to be building a model from the Blood Letters kit. And I'm just going to show you a few basic things to keep in mind when you're building the model. Now here I've laid out the instructions for this specific kit. This is all just some information for the symbols of the kit, but I would recommend you read through these on your own because some of, because these won't be very relevant for today's video but I would, and there isn't really any present in this kit but I would recommend if you're building a bigger model I would recommend to definitely read these because there will be some of these symbols in it so the layout of these instructions is just a basic infantry kit so the, this is how these are generally laid out so you have a piece that you build for every one of the models including the leader and the specials with the banner and the instrument in this case and then these are all interchangeable parts that will be showing up later in the instructions like this here this here and these are also interchangeable how this is going to work is you need to build these you can choose to build 10 or i personally prefer to just work through the instructions because that's just what i enjoy most but do whatever your preferences are after I've built that piece here, because today I'm going to be building the Blood Hunter, the leader variant, these are the pieces that I'm going to be attaching to this. And there you can see some of the interchangeable parts that were mentioned earlier. So now we're going to get started building the model. Because this is just a basic infantry kit, you won't see any numbers because the pieces are fairly easy to find. But if you have a bigger kit or like a character, then these will be numbered and there will be numbers ingrained into the sprue and those pieces just correlate, it just helps you find them a bit. So here, it says to build this component, we need a body and a little fin right there. The bodies, as you can see, are here. So I'm just going to grab my clippers, make sure that you use the clippers in this orientation so that the dip is facing upwards. So your clip with the flat end just helps you with precision and there you go now the piece isn't actually ready as you can see there's some imperfections here where the sprue is still attached you just want to get your clippers and just clip them off and there that's nice and clean do the same the other end and there now the piece should be ready unless there's any mold lines which as you can see in this model there are and a mold line is just little imperfection in the mold just there and you can also just scrape them off with the clippers just fine there you go this piece is ready just going to do the rest i'm just going to do the same for the rest of the pieces and then i'll come back to you once i'm ready so i've got the two pieces that i need to create that component here the body and the fin and as you can see there's a nice little slit there that the fin goes into and I can see in the instructions that these spines go backwards so I'm just gonna put that in place without any glue and that fits fine and now to actually go about attaching it I'll need the plastic glue that we saw before just want to take the lid off this the needle just comes out like that don't worry and I'll just put that back in normally like that and you don't need much, you just want to squeeze it until you see something come out the other end. This glue's not got a whole lot in it, so it might take a while. Now, it won't be that hard for you, your glue won't be that bad, but this one's quite old and it's almost empty. So that is enough and I can just place that in the middle and use the needle to run it through. Just slot the piece in like that and there, that'll be attached very nicely. And there. As you can see in the instructions, that's the top piece complete. I'm going to do the same for the bottom piece and then I'll show you how to do the base. 
So now I've got the two components ready, the torso and the legs. Just need to fit them together like that and they're fitting just fine. Then just gonna do the same thing. Add a little more because it's a wider area. That's enough. And then there you go. You might want to press it into place a bit if it's a bit of a wonkier bond because this that was did earlier was a very nice fit. That's more of a flat surface. And there you go, that's attached. So now, in the instructions, it tells where to attach it to the base. Now, this is a bit of a weird one because the bases are in a Ziploc bag. Normally, they'll just be in a sealed plastic bag, in which case you could just take your clippers and cut off the corner. But I don't need to do that because it's in a nice Ziploc bag. And there, just get out base. And plastic glue will still work for the base. Just add little bits of the feet. You might want to add a bit more than usual then to other places and if it's a flatter surface without a texture underneath then you know that that's where you want to put the glue and then you just attach it to the base. It'll need a bit more time to dry than any other piece will because it's a bit of a weirder plastic and it's got a odd texture on it. Once that's dry it'll be a nice and secure bond. Some people like to use super glue and if you want to do that to attach it to the base then go do that if you want to. Me, I prefer using plastic glue because using super glue just seems a bit unnecessary to me. So now at this stage in the instructions, this might seem a bit confusing because these two pieces, and there's a very odd how they're attaching them, and you might just be a bit confused, so I thought I'd just clear this up. When it comes to stuff like this, because this does happen a decent amount of the time, this piece is here on the sprue. It's just one of these, and then just one of these here, and then the head is just here and as you can see there's a hole in the mouth and the other piece will slot nicely into that and I'll just clip out the pieces and show you that now. So I've got the pieces here and I'm just going to show you quickly how they go in. So you can see that this has a rounded area here, rounded area here, stick the tongue through the mouth and it just slots in like that. I thought I'd just show you that because that could have been a bit confusing and there's quite a few pieces like that in different kits. So now to attach the head, I've got a ball joint here and this is just for posing purposes so that you can still get a firm bond and you can move the head around wherever you want. You can have him looking straight or you can have him looking slightly to the side or something like that. Just pose it how you want to. You just want to put a little bit of glue in it there and then it'll just attach normally and that is a very common thing that you'll see and I think I'm gonna of him with his third head slightly to the side. You might want to hold it in place for a bit as well because ball and socket joints can however be a little limiting sometimes if the neck is craned weirdly like this. I think that's secure enough to just dry on its own. So now we'll move on to these interchangeable parts that we saw earlier. So you can just move back and then here is a list of all the swords and a list of all the off hands. With kits like this, just look at the sprue and look basically what is a sword, like I can pick these, and what is just a hand, so I can pick these, and you don't really generally need to look at instructions for interchangeable parts like these. So I'm just going to pick out mine and then I'll come back to you once I've got those ready. So now I've picked the two pieces that I like, and as you can see, the joints here are a bit weird because they're very push fit to fit a specific pose for the model. If it's a bit awkward you can just wiggle it around until it slots into place nicely like that. And there you go. That is it working just fine. So now you take the piece, put a little bit of glue on it. Once you've found the place once it should be a lot easier to find it again. Then just going to do the same for the other arm. And if you wiggle something out of place accidentally it's very easy to just push back because the glue is very sturdy. There you go, that is the model complete. Just a few things that I wanted to mention before I end the video that didn't particularly apply to this model. If you've got something numbered, it can quite often be numbered incorrectly if it's an older kit. So if something looks in the instructions that doesn't quite fit what is on the sprue, the instructions will be what is correct piece-wise, but the sprue will be what is correct numbers-wise. If something's incorrect numbers-wise and it isn't quite fitting with what's on the sprue, 
just try, try examine the piece if you can. If not, you're going to have to look online to see if anyone else has found the same problem. But that was really the main thing. So this was quite a monopause model. A lot of other models can be more multi-pause, so you'll have more freedom with the pauses. See how, you remember how the shoulders were very jagged, that's to keep the pause specific. So a lot of models will just have flat edges there so that you can move it as you want. Or some will have ball joints there, but that is quite uncommon. But that is all I wanted to say for this video. Feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to see some of our own work, you can go check out our Instagram. And if you want to support us elsewhere, you can go check out our Patreon. And we've also got a Discord server that you can go join if you want to talk to other hobby doers like me and you. But with that all being said, I'll see you next time.